For this project, any category for in your work, but I'm using a full skein of Kieran One Pound in Azure and Cape Cod Blue. As for tools, a 7mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. We're using 5 stitches for this project and they will be as followed. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet Half double crochet double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video so let's get started. Getting this top started we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, we're then going to grab our 7 millimeter hook and start off by making a chain that goes from one side to your other side and just to let you guys know I have a total of 18 inches or 46 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is block off this last chain that we made with our thumb. We're going to chain up one, and this first row is just going to be a row of single crochets into every loop that we have in our chain. So into this first loop that we blocked off with our thumb, or the second loop from our hook, we're going to go in with a single crochet. Let's do the next one together. We're going to insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down our chain. We've just made our way down putting one single crochet into every chain that we had and the next row is also going to be extremely easy where it's just going to be a row of double crochets. And the first few rows of this alpine stitch are actually super easy. It's just going to be single crochet, double crochet, another single crochet and then it'll get a little fancy after that but just keep up with this so far. But once when we are ready to start up our next row we're going to chain up three that counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work prepare for a double crochet and put one double crochet into every loop that we have going back down our work and then like I said we have one more row of single crochet but we'll start that one off together just to start it off together <laughs> and then we'll do the rest of the alpine stitch together. We've just made our way down with our second row and our second row was double crochets and like I said our next row is a row of single crochets so super easy chain up one flip our work, put one single crochet into every loop, going all the way down our work, and then the fun and possibly complicated stuff will begin. <laughs> we just got finished up with our row of single crochet, so what we should have right now is a row of single, row of double, and row of single, and now we're going to get started on the alpine stitch, and that's basically just a bunch of front post double crochets, but just in a certain order, so relatively easy, you just got to keep an eye out for it. But how we start off the alpine stitch row is chain up three because that counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work and then once when we get to this first alpine stitch row that we're doing, we're going to take a look at this second double crochet post that we made for ourselves. So obviously here's the first, second, third. We don't need any of these guys. We're just going to take a look at the second one and then we're going to do a front post double crochet. So all that is is prepare for a double crochet. And then once we get here, we're actually going to insert our hook behind our second double crochet that we were looking at. We're going to slide it behind this double crochet post. And then from here, we're going to finish off the double crochet like usual, but this is going to be extended. So we're going to yank this up just a little bit so that it can be level with our chain three that we just made. So really quickly, let's do this together. We're going to prepare for a double crochet. Oh no, that's a yarn over. I'm so sorry. We're going to yarn over, pull through. Once we get here, we're actually going to yank all the way up as much as we can so that it's level with this chain three that we just did. And from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first alpine stitch. As you guys can see, it has a really pretty twist right there. And then once we have our first alpine stitch done, what we're going to do is prepare for a double crochet. And then now we're going to take a look at our single crochet row that we just did right before we did this guy. And we're actually going to be skipping a loop and then going into the loop right after because basically the loop that we just made should have gone into this one. So if we went into the same one that we were supposed to be going into, we'd actually be doing an increase and we don't want that. But really quickly, we're going to insert our hook into this second loop with a regular double crochet. And then now we have alpine double crochet. Let's do another alpine. We're going to prepare for a double crochet, 
take a look at our fourth double crochet post that we have. So we have one, two, we went into that second, three, four, and we're gonna go behind this fourth post. So we're gonna insert our hook behind this post. We're going to yarn over, pull through, just like how we do with the normal double crochet. We're gonna yank all the way up so that it's level, and we're also doing this so that it helps us work our work, our work up faster, wink, wink. <laughs> and once we get here, we're gonna prepare for another double crochet, or I'm so sorry, we're gonna yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our alpine number two. And we're gonna do a couple of these together. So let's prepare for a double crochet. And now we're just gonna do our regular double crochet. So take a look at the single crochet row behind us. We're going to skip this loop, insert our hook into the loop right after that with a regular double crochet. And now that we have two, two sets, an alpine, a double crochet, an alpine, and a double crochet, we're just gonna take a look at the back really quick. And if you guys can see, we're skipping this loop right here. This is our double crochet, skip one loop, double crochet. This is what our back would look like. Obviously, no one would see this, but if you want to make sure that you're not accidentally increasing or accidentally going into the wrong loop, this is what you guys want to keep an eye out for. So let's do a couple more together, just a little bit quicker. We're going to prepare for a double crochet. We're going to skip this double crochet post because nothing is going to go in there. We're going to go into the one after that with a back post double crochet. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yank up so that everything's level not prepare we're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two from here we're going to prepare for a double crochet skip one single crochet loop in the back and double crochet into the next one let's do just one more so that we can move on with this row we're going to prepare for a double crochet skip this double crochet post go into the one right after with a back post double crochet so slide your double crochet behind that back post yarn over pull through, yank up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then from here, prepare for a double crochet. Skip one loop into the single crochet row right before this, and put one double crochet into that next loop. And as you guys can see, we have a couple of our alpine stitches all finished up. It doesn't look like much now, but it'll look a lot better once we have a couple more rows in. But go ahead and keep doing this all the way down our row, and then we will meet you guys back so that we can do another row. But it's basically going to be the same thing. We're just going to do it as a really quick refresher. We just made our way all the way down with our first row of our alpine stitch, and I did leave this last post for us to go into together, just in case if you guys ended off like I did. Don't get intimidated. I know it's going to look a little weird, but it'll all work out just fine. But just as... A quick looky-loo as you guys can see we have our front post double crochet double crochet front post double and we were skipping every other double crochet post that we had take a quick look at the back we have just one loop available in the back because we were skipping one loop so it's single crochet loop double crochet single crochet loop double crochet and that is that all the way down and then it depends well it depends yes this next part depends on how many chains you originally made so if you guys ended on just a regular double crochet double crochet like this that is totally fine but if you guys actually end on an alpine stitch like I do that's fine we'll do that together but once we get here we just have one loop up here we're still going to be skipping this loop right here and all we're going to do is prepare for a double crochet and then into this last double crochet post we're going to be doing a regular alpine stitch but it's not going to look like an alpine stitch because there's nothing on the other side holding it up so it's just going to end up looking like a regular double crochet. But we're still going behind that post. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yank up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then this is our first official row of our alpine stitch going all the way down. And then the next row that we have in between every alpine stitch row that we have is super simple. It's just a row of single crochets. So when we get here, we're just going to chain up one flip our work and then into this first loop and into every loop we're just going to be putting one single crochet so go ahead and do that all the way down we have just made it all the way down with our row of single crochet and this is what the front looks like really quick this is our first single crochet row that we did and then i guess we'll go through all of it this is our first single crochet row that we did 
we did a row of solid double crochet, a row of solid single crochet right underneath that. And the row after that was our alpine. So our alpine stitch, double crochet, alpine stitch, double crochet. Once we made it all the way to the end for that row, then we went back up with a row of single crochet. And now we're about to do another alpine stitch row. And it's going to be exactly the same as this first one. But instead of it being into the same stitch that these guys were in, they're going to be staggered. So just to show you guys, our first alpine stitch was in this guy. We're going to insert it into this regular double crochet post that we have right here. And then this one is going to be a regular double crochet alpine stitch into this guy. So let's do this together really quickly. Once when we get here, we're going to chain up three. This counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work and then into this first loop that we have, we're going to be putting our regular double crochet. Really quickly, we're not going to be going into this loop because if we put it in here, we're basically going to be doing an increase since our chain up of three is right here and we don't want to do that. So we're going to skip this guy, prepare for a double crochet into this first loop that we have. Just one regular double crochet. And now we are ready to alpine. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet into this next double crochet post that we have. We're going to be inserting our hook behind it right here. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to yank up so that this is all even. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first alpine stitch for this next row. Let's do this a couple more times together. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet and we're going to be putting a regular double crochet into the single crochet loop that we have right behind our work. But we're going to take a look at it really quick and we're going to be skipping this guy, inserting our hook into this second single crochet loop that we have. So insert your hook with a regular double crochet, just like that. And then now we can go into this next double crochet post that we have in the previous double crochet row. So prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook behind this double crochet post, yarn over, pull through, yank all the way up, prepare for a double, yarn over, sorry, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then let's do this a couple more times. Prepare for a double crochet. Skip this single crochet loop. Insert your hook into the single crochet loop right after that with a regular double crochet. From here, prepare for a double crochet. We're going to be going behind this double crochet post. So we're going to insert behind, yarn over, pull through, yank all the way up, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and just one more regular double crochet we will do together. Prepare for a double crochet. Skip this single crochet loop, go into the one right after with a double crochet, just like that. And this is what we should have so far. As you guys can see, everything is pretty much the same, except they're in every other loop now. So they're staggered. We don't want them directly on top of each other. Otherwise, it'll just end up giving us a solid ribbing row. And we don't want that for this project, at least. So this is what we're going to keep on doing all the way until we get to the end. Once we get to the end, we're going to chain up one and single crochet all the way back down. So in between every alpine stitch row, there's going to be a row of single crochet in between. And we're going to maintain this solid block of alpine stitches until we get just a few inches right underneath where our waist is. Because once we get to the waist, we're going to need that to taper in so that the sweater is just a little bit more fitted. But I'll meet you guys back once when I have the length that I need so that I can tell you guys the length that I have and also what to do and that will be in the next clip. I now have my little solid block of alpine stitches and just to let you guys know from the first chain that we did all the way up until where I ended I have a total of 7 inches or 18 centimeters and a really quick tip is that I didn't end on a single crochet row. The last row that we have is this alpine stitch row and then we're now going to start decreasing but we're only going to be decreasing into the single crochet rows so that it's a little bit easier for us and also it's quicker. So now that we know that we're going to get started with our next row which is a decrease single crochet row. This is where I ended. This you can see we have our double crochet right here and all we're going to do is chain up one flip our work and then into the first two loops we're going to be doing a decrease single crochet. 
So we're going to insert our hook into that first loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and then insert our hook into that next loop. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And the reason why we are doing this is so that this can start to taper in where our waist is. And then once we get to our waist, we're either going to expand or I'm going to actually just keep mine going straight up until we get to our underarms. And then once we get there, we're going to start tapering that in as well. But once we have decreased, all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every loop that we have, leaving the last two loops because we're going to do a decrease into there as well. So I'll meet you guys back once we get to the end of this row so that we can decrease together and also talk about the next alpine row that we're going to do. We've made it to the end of our single crochet row and we left our last two loops for ourselves because we're going to do a decrease like I said. So let's do that together really quickly. Into this second to last loop that we have in this row, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to insert our hook into the last loop that we have in this row. We're going to yarn over, pull through one, and we should have, we should, let's do that again. <laughs> insert, pull through into the last one pull through there we go we should have three loops on the hook from here we're gonna we're gonna yarn over pull through all three and then that is how we decrease on both sides from here all the way up until we get to our waist so once when we get here really quickly we're going to chain up another three and we're gonna do another alpine row but we're just gonna talk about this really really quickly we flipped our work and now we're looking at our alpine row and what we're gonna do is actually just do basically what we did in the previous row, but this will eventually start to taper in. So once when it starts to taper in an extra loop, then we're going to be skipping this loop. And then once when it tapers in more, then we're going to skip this loop again. But since this is just one, what we can do is actually just prepare for a double crochet. Put one double crochet into this first loop. Just like that. And then into the next loop prepare for a double crochet and then we're going to go into this next post or so basically skipping this first double crochet post that we have. So into the second double crochet post, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And once we have that, we're going to continue doing everything the same. So double crochet into that next loop, skipping that one single crochet loop in the back, prepare for a double crochet, go behind this next double crochet post, yank up, finish up your double crochet. And then go ahead and do this all the way down. Once we reach the end, we're going to chain up one, do another decrease single crochet row, and then do that row all the way until you get to the end, decrease at this end as well, and then do another alpine row. And then keep doing that all the way back and forth until this decrease section reaches your waist. And then that's when we will meet back again. So I can tell you guys the length that I have and then what to do after that. So this is what we have now that we have our little bit of decrease rows. And just to let you guys know, from the waist all the way up to here, this was all solid. And then we stopped right here, right where we started doing our decrease rows, just a few inches right before we got to our waist. We decreased all the way up until we got to our waist. And just to let you guys know, from this first row of decrease into our single crochet rows that we did, all the way up until I got to my waist, I have a total of, if I can find it, I have a total of three inches or about eight centimeters. And now that we have this, we're just going to go straight up with more regular Alpine stitches, nothing fancy into it until we get to our underarm. Once we get to the underarm, we're going to decrease more so that our front portion and our back portion actually, so that our portions can actually taper in right underneath the arms. So I'm just going to do the beginning with you guys. It's going to be super easy, just like how we've done the rest. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can decrease it again just one more time. So we're ready to get started on our next block of solid alpine stitches. And I did end on this alpine stitch row. I didn't end on a single crochet row. We're going to do our first single crochet row for our solid portion together. So what we're going to do is just chain up one, flip our work, and then we're going to go into every loop that we have, putting one single crochet into every loop going all the way down. Once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up three and then do our alpine stitch all over again. So go ahead and do that until we have a solid block 
until this portion reaches under our arm and then I will meet you guys back to tell you guys the length that I have and also to show you guys how to decrease just one more time so that we can work our way up towards our neck. I now have the solid alpine stitch rows from where it goes to our waist all the way up until our underarm and now we're going to decrease just a little bit more so that this can go up towards our neck but we're not going to decrease all the way up until our neck we're just going to decrease until the sides where these underarm portion is just kind of curves around our body so that it's in the front and then from there we're just going to go straight up but just to let you guys know from where we ended from where my waist is all the way up until where i ended i have a total of four inches or about 10 centimeters and the decreasing that we're going to do is exactly the same as we did this portion so this top so far has been solid rows decrease solid rows and we're going to decrease again but just for a handful of rows but we're just going to decrease together as a really quick refresher and then i'll meet you guys back to tell you guys the measurement that i have for my little decrease chunk so we're getting ready to decrease together i'm sure that you guys have already gotten through all this yourself but just to do it with each other, we're going to chain up one and we are going to decrease into the single crochet rows only. And as you guys can see, this is our alpine stitch row. So the next row is a single crochet row. So we're going to chain up one. We're going to flip our work and then into this first chunk that we have, these first two loops, we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, insert again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then from there, we're gonna put one single crochet into every loop, leaving the last two loops, and then we're gonna decrease into those last two loops. And then once we have that, we're gonna chain up three and then do our alpine stitch into every other double crochet that we have so that these are staggered, just like how we have been doing it. But go ahead and do this until this decrease portion that we're about to do curves up in front of your body and I will meet you guys back to tell you guys the measurement that I have and then we can do the rest from there. We've now made it through with our little chunk from where our underarm was and we decreased all the way up until it got to the front of our chest-ish and the length that I have from right here all the way up to where I stopped is about four inches or 10 centimeters and then from here, what we can do is just go straight up with our alpine stitch until this reaches our shoulders. I'm not going to show you how to do this part because I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me speak about it. But I did end on this alpine stitch row. So just go in with a single crochet row from there, chain up three and do the rest and keep doing this until this gets the length that you guys need. And then I'll meet you guys back in the next clip so that I can tell you guys the length that I have and also to tell you guys what to do next. So I have just finished up doing this entire blunt portion that reaches all the way up to our neck. And just to show you guys what all of it looks like really quickly, let's turn it on its side. It looks a little crazy, but let's just show you one side. So from the bottom, from where we started, we have a chunk of blunt, decrease, blunt, decrease, and then blunt up here. And just to let you guys know from the bottom all the way up to the top, I have a total of 21 inches or 56 centimeters. But if you guys want this to be longer or even a dress, that would also be really pretty. You guys can continue to extend this and yeah, it'll basically be the same thing, just longer. But once when we have this one side done, we're going to make a second side that is exactly the same. And then once we have that second side, we can sandwich them together, work on the border, the neck and the shoulder, and then we'll be all done. So I'm sure you guys have already guessed it, but I have my front piece and my back piece all finished up. And now we're going to just go along these sides to connect everything, but we're just gonna speak about that really, really quickly so that we know exactly where we are connecting. So taking a look at our work, we're gonna take a look at it on the side because that's easiest, but we're actually going to be connecting with a row of single crochet, just like how we connect everything, all the way up until we reach our underarm portion. So if you guys remember, we have a row of, or a section, of solid decrease solid decrease solid so if you guys didn't have any stitch markers or didn't put any in you guys are going to have to eyeball this but it's basically going to be if you guys want to look at the top this is the easiest way to look at it if you guys don't have stitch markers but the blunt portion that we have we're not going to go into there because that is where our sleeve is going to be and then also that one section that we have right underneath our blunt portion that decreases we're not going to be going into there as well so the two last sections that we did we're going to leave for our sleeve but 
from the bottom all the way up to where we have our last decrease section is going to be where we are going to connect everything together. And like I said, we're just going to connect with a row of single crochet and it's going to be the same on both sides. So let's do that next part together. So taking a look at our work, I've already went ahead and connected one side and it is going to buckle if you try to lay it flat, but that's normal since we have all those decreases in there. Once when you wear it, it'll all even out. But a tip that I have right before we get started, it's not a tip, it's actually ne necessary, but we're actually going to be flipping our work so that our pretty sides are facing each other so that once when we go in with our row of single crochets, the seams are going to be on the inside. So as you guys can see, this is our alpine stitch on this side. Our alpine stitch on the other side all we're gonna do is sandwich it together so that we are looking at the back and then once we have that we can now go in with our row of single crochet along the entirety of our side now that we've sandwiched our work together making sure that our pretty sides are facing each other now we're ready to do our row of single crochet to connect everything in so we're gonna take our hook insert our hook into the corner piece of the front panel and then into the corner loop in the second panel and then we're going to insert our hook. We're going to pull through and chain up one to secure. And then for this part, it's going to be extremely simple, just like how we have connected pretty much everything else on the channel. We're going to be working into a bunch of these side double crochets, and we're just going to be putting two single crochets, making sure that we go in through the front panel and in through the back panel. So let's do the first few together really quickly. So taking a look at this front panel only, we're going to insert our hook into this first loop that we have. And then also into the second loop that we have, we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And this is a side double crochet, so we're going to do the same thing, making sure that we're going in through both. So into the first front panel, into the second panel, and single crochet. And then once we get here, we are going to run into that single crochet row that we did that was, in, that was behind our work. So we're just going to find a loop. There's not going to be any great ones for us to go into. But into the single crochet row, we're going to ooh, find a loop and then take a look at the back panel. This single crochet row, find a loop in there as well. And then single crochet. Let's do the next bit together again. So we have our side double crochets right here. We're going to insert into the front panel, insert into the next panel, single crochet once. And this is a side double crochet, so we're going to go in just one more time. Single crochet going in through both panels again. And then we're back at our single crochet row. So we're going to find a loop into this single crochet row, find a loop into this back panel, single crochet row, single crochet. And we are going to do that all the way down until we reach that point that I just mentioned. That point is, if we're taking a look at the front, it is right where we have our blunt portion and our decrease. And then right where that decrease starts, to do our blunt portion again, going down the body, we're going to end it right there, and that's gonna be where our sleeve starts. And then once we get there, you guys can go ahead and cut and tie, and then do the same thing on the other side. We've just gone in with our row of single crochet along the sides on both sides, and now we are going to connect the neck portion. And this is going to be different for everyone, depending on this shoulder slash neck portion that you guys have. And just to let you guys know, mine across is 10 inches or 25 centimeters. And this is really close to how big I want my neck hole to be. So I'm actually just going to be going in with a couple single crochets on the side just to close it in so that this can be connected so that we can start working on the sleeve. So I'm actually just going to go in with about an inch or three centimeters on both sides, connecting the front panel to the back panel. And then we'll be done with that and then ready to start the rest of this. So let's just do one of these sides together and then we can move on. We're ready to connect the shoulder slash neck portion. And all we're going to do is connect with a single crochet row just like how we did the sides. So we're going to insert our hook into this first corner into the front panel. And then also insert it into the first loop that we have in the back panel. Insert our loop pull through, chain up one to secure, and like I said, I'm just going to be going in with about an inch or three centimeters on one side. So let's do this together. Into the next available loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook in through the front panel. Into the next available loop that we have in through the back panel, insert your hook into there, single crochet. And I'm just going to do this one more time. Insert my hook into the next available loop, available loop in the front panel. Insert your hook into the next available loop in the back. 
single crochet and then once when I get here I'm going to chain up one and cut and then do the same thing on the other side. We've just finished up connecting our neck portion and next we're going to be going in with a row of single crochet along our armhole with our same base color that we've been working with this entire time and I'll explain that to you guys in the next video but go ahead and grab that and we'll get started. So taking a look at our armhole, this is going to be exactly the same as when we connected the sides together, except we're not connecting the front and the back, but we are working into the same loops. So that part will be the same. But to get this started, we're first going to insert our hook into one of these loops that's right next to the seam that we have in the body. It doesn't matter which one, just as long as it's right next to the seam. We're just going to insert our hook, insert our yarn, pull through chain up one to secure and then we're just going to do a couple of these together since you guys already know how into this first side double crochet that we have unless if you guys have a single crochet row we're going to go into this first side double crochet with one single crochet two single crochet you guys already know the deal and this next bit is our single crochet row that we have along the inside so we're going to find a loop put one single crochet in there let's do this one more time we're going to find our next side double crochet row, put two single crochets into that guy, and then into the next single crochet row, put one single crochet. And we're doing all of this with our base color, which is the same color that we did the body portion, because if we go in with our secondary color, it'll still work out, but it may look a little bit messy. But once when we have this row, then we're going to be doing another row of single crochet on top of this guy with our secondary color and that's going to make it look a lot cleaner and then once we have that we're going to go in with our sleeve and we're going to need to measure that out but we'll measure that out once when we get there so go ahead and do this all the way around once we make it to the end we are going to connect with a slip stitch cut and tie grab our secondary color and then do another row of single crochet directly on top of this one but i'll meet you guys back so that we can start it off together we just finished up doing our row of single crochet along the sleeve and now we're going to grab our secondary color and just go in with a row of single crochet all the way around super easy peasy but right before we do that we're actually going to want to try this on first and then we're going to measure out and see how long we want our sleeve to be and i'm sure you guys can tell but there is a slight increase that we have right here where it comes from the underarm all the way up to the shoulder so you're first going to measure where the underarm is from where our first single crochet is down here until where you want the sleeve to be remi remembering that we do have a cuff to put in as well and just to let you guys know i have a total of 18 inches or 46 centimeters but since we have that knowledge we can actually go in with the rest of this right now so like i said a row of single crochet with our secondary color and then from there we're going to connect with a slip stitch and then just continue the sleeve from there make a chain and do the rest so let's insert our hook into where one of these bottom loops is it doesn't matter which one you go into you just got to pick one of them we're going to pick this one insert our hook onto there pull through chain up one to secure and go around putting one single crochet into every loop going all the way around and then we're going to connect with a slip stitch and then continue on with the sleeve from there we've made it all the way around with our secondary color and now we're just going to slip stitch into this first loop that we made for ourselves so we're going to insert our hook into this guy, yarn over, pull through everything, boy, if we can, let's try that one more time, <laughs> pull through this first one and this one, there we go, okay, and then now that we have this, you guys should have, if you haven't already, uh, measured out to see how long you want your sleeve to be, like I said in the previous clip, I wanted mine to be 18 inches or 46 centimeters, so from here, we're just going to go straight into doing the sleeve. I'm just going to go ahead and make a chain that equals out the length that I need the sleeve to be. So go ahead and just start that off and make that chain. And then I'll meet you guys back once when we have the length that we need so that we can do the rest. Once when we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is block off that last chain that we made. We're going to chain up two. That counts as a half double crochet. Once we have that, we're going to prepare for a half double crochet insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off with our thumb or the third loop from the hook with one half double crochet and that is that so let's do the next few together prepare for another half double crochet insert our hook into that next loop that we have yarn over pull through yarn over pull through all three let's do this one more time prepare for a half double crochet 
insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And continue doing half double crochets going all the way back down your chain and then we're going to connect with a slip stitch into the base and we'll continue from there. We've just done a row of half double crochet going all the way back down our chain and now we're going to connect into the base with a slip stitch. So once when we get here we're going to take a look at all of these loops that we have and we're going to count up two loops. So this is the loop that we're currently in. We're not going to count this guy. We're going to go into the next available loop. We're going to count one into the next one, two. Insert your hook into that second one with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And that's how we connect our first row of half double crochets. And then once we get here, we're going to slip stitch up the next two. So there's one, there's two. We're going to flip our work. And since we are working up towards the shoulder, we're going to do some increases so that our sleeve can stay the same length along the bottom. So this part is going to be fairly simple. All we're gonna do is prepare for a half double crochet and into this first half double crochet loop that we have, we're just gonna be inserting two half double crochet. So there is one half double crochet and then one more, two half double crochet. And then that's our increase. Once we get here, we're gonna go all the way down putting one half double crochet into every loop when we make it to the end. We're going to chain up two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every loop, working our way all the way back, leaving the last loop that we have so that we can do another increase. And we're going to keep increasing just like that until we reach the tip of our shoulder where the seam is that we made for ourselves. And then once we're working our way back down, we're going to do the same thing, but doing a decrease in the spot where we were just doing the increases. But once when I'm done with this row, once when I've gone all the way back down and came back, leaving one last loop for us. We're going to increase together just one more time and then we will have at it from there. So I've just half double crocheted all the way down and we have this loop right here. We have our last one and we're going to do another increase into this guy just to show you guys one more time. So we're going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert into this last loop just once and we're going to do that again. Now we have two half double crochet into that last loop. And then we're going to connect just the same way that we connected before. So we're going to count up two loops. Here's one, here's two. Insert your hook into that second with a slip stitch. And then slip stitch up one, slip stitch up two to work your way up to the next row. Flippity flip your work. Prepare for a half double crochet. And into this first half double crochet loop, we're going to be doing an increase. So here's one half double crochet. And then here's two half double crochet. And then continue your work all the way down, putting one half double crochet into every loop. Once we make it to the end, we're gonna chain up two and work our way back, remembering to increase into this last loop that we have. And we're gonna continue to do that all the way up until we reach this shoulder portion where the seam is. And then once we hit this point, we're going to do decreases, but the same pattern going all the way down. And then we'll be all done with one of our sleeves. So I'll meet you guys back once when we get to this shoulder portion. We just finished up doing one entire side of our sleeve and this was, ooh, this was the increase side that we just did. And as you guys can see, I have reached this middle loop and that's right where this seam is, where the shoulder is. So since I ended on, let me show you guys, this side, I'm going to do my half double crochets all the way down until I have just two loops left and then I will be doing an increase in here with you guys just to show you guys. But if you guys didn't end on that side like how I did, if you guys actually ended up right here, then just attach your hook into that second loop with a slip stitch, just like how we've been doing, slip stitch up two loops, and then we're gonna decrease the same way. You guys are gonna be decreasing into these first two loops, the same spot that I will be decreasing in, but I have to get there first. So I'll meet you guys back once we get right here. So like I said, we have just half double crocheted all the way down, leaving the last two loops because we're gonna be doing a decrease into there. So what we're gonna do is prepare for a half double crochet insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, into that last loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four loops that we have on the hook, and that is our decrease. And then we're going to connect it to the base the same way, we're gonna count up two loops, so here's one, here's two. Insert your hook into that second loop with a slip stitch. And then we're going to start off the next one together, but it's basically gonna be the same thing. So we're gonna slip stitch up, the next two loops to work our way up to the next row. 
we're going to flip our work and then into the first two loops we're going to be doing a decrease so we're going to prepare for a half double crochet into this first loop insert our hook yarn over pull through insert our hook into the next loop yarn over pull through and then from here yarn over pull through all four loops that's on the hook and that is our next yeah our next decrease sorry and then once we get here we're just going to go down putting one half double crochet into every loop that we have once we make it to the end we're going to chain up two put more half double crochets into the row and then once we make it to the end leave the last two loops do a decrease into there connect to the base like usual and then keep doing that until we don't have any more loops left into this armhole that we have and then we're going to connect it all together from there as you guys can see we have made it all the way around with our sleeve we don't have any more loops down here to go into so all we're going to do is sandwich the two ends that we have together and do a row of single crochet making sure that we go in and out of each panel that we have going all the way back down and we'll do that together right now so this is what we should have so far and by the way it's going to be exactly the same whether if we end where the sweater is or on the other end we're going to connect it all the same way so this is what we have we're first going to insert our hook in through this first available loop that we have into the front panel and then also into the first available loop that we have into the back panel which is if i can find it this guy and then once we have both the front and the back panel connected we're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two let's do this together just one more time i know it's super easy you guys already got it but let's insert our hook into this next available loop that we have in the front panel and then insert your hook into the next available loop that we have in that back panel and then single crochet yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and we're going to keep doing this all the way down and once when we're done doing a row of single crochet connecting our front and back panel this is what we should have and what we're going to do next is a little ring of color before we get started on the actual cuff and our first row is going to be a small row of single crochet along the end of the sleeve with the same sleeve color We've made it to the end and now we're actually going to go back into the sleeve with the same color just doing a row of single crochet all the way around but we do need this to cinch in just a little bit so we're going to go in with a row of putting one single crochet into each side half double crochet. So all this is going to be it's going to be pretty simple we're first going to insert our hook into any one of these side half double crochet loops. We're going to insert our hook insert our yarn pull through and what we're going to do from here is chain up one to secure and that also counts as a single crochet so we're going to leave that half double crochet alone we're going to insert a hook into this next side half double crochet and just put one single crochet and we're going to keep doing this all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to slip stitch into that first loop we're going to grab our secondary color or our <laughs> base color and then we're just going to go in with a really small ring of color just to give it a little pop and then we're going to go in with our cuff so we've made it all the way around with our row of single crochets and we're just going to insert our hook into this first loop with a slip stitch so all that is is inserting our hook we're going to yarn over pull through everything on the hook we're going to chain up one and cut this color and then we're going to insert our next color just so we can have a little single crochet border along the cuff so we're going to insert our hook into any one of these loops grab our secondary color we're going to pull through and then we're going to chain up one to secure that in and then from here put one single crochet into every loop going back all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to connect with a slip stitch and then from there we're going to chain up one and cut and then we're going to go in with another row of single crochet so that we can clean up the cuff and then the actual cuff we just made our way all the way around with our little detail color and now we're going to go in with our sleeve color and we're going to go in with another row of single crochet and we're doing it this way so that once when we actually do the cuff it won't look as messy so this is just the same as all the other rows just go in putting one single crochet into every loop and then once when we make it to the end we're, we are going to connect with a slip stitch but we are not going to cut and tie because we're going to go straight into doing our cuff right after that now that we've made our way all the way around with this next color and we slip stitch now we're going to start working on our cuff and my cuff is going to be super small like i said it's going to come out to about an inch and a half 
So from here, we're just gonna start off by making a chain that comes out to whatever measurement you want your cuff to be. And once we have that measurement, we are going to block off that last chain that we made. We're gonna chain up one and then insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from the hook with a slip stitch. And then we're going to do that one more time into this next available loop. We're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through everything. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way down and once we make it to the base, we're going to connect into the base with a slip stitch to connect this row. Then we're gonna slip stitch up another row and then we're going to be able to work our way back doing back loop slip stitches because we want some ribbing for the cuff. So once when we have, oh wait, I have one more loop to go into. Okay, now that we have made our way all the way down our chain, what we're gonna do is take a look at our cuff. Then we're gonna slip stitch into the next available loop that we have. So not this guy, because this is the one that has our chain in it. Into this loop, we're gonna do a slip stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. And that's how we connect our first row of slip stitches. And we're gonna slip stitch up another loop so that we can make our way up to the next row. So we're gonna insert, yarn over, pull through everything, flip our work. And now we're gonna go in with a row of back loop slip stitches so that we can get some ribbing. So into this first available loop, we're gonna insert our hook into that back loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And this is going to be the entirety of the cuff. So go ahead and keep doing back loop slip stitches until you guys reach the end. When you do, go ahead and chain up one, flip your work, and continue to do back loop slip stitches until you guys get to the base. When you get to the base, you're gonna slip stitch into the next available loop, and then you're gonna slip stitch up the next available loop to work your way up to the next row, and then continue to do more back loop slip stitches. And we're going to continue to do that until we don't have any more loops to go into into the base and then we're going to connect the two pieces that we have with a single crochet row just like how we've connected everything else but i'll meet you guys back once we have that so that we can do that together we have now made it all the way around with our cuff as you guys can see we don't have any more loops to go into and all we're going to do is sandwich these two ends together and then single crochet them together, just like how we've single crocheted everything else, cut and tie, and then we will be all done with this side. So what we're gonna do is insert our hook into this first available front panel, into this next available loop in the back panel, and single crochet. And that's it, you guys already know how to do this because we've done this a million times already for this sweater. So go ahead and keep doing this all the way down when we make it to the end, cut and tie, and then have at it for the next sleeve. And once when we have all of that done, the next thing that we're gonna do is do a really quick bottom border along this bottom. And it's going to be fairly simple. It's just a bunch of rows of back loop double crochets. And that'll be it. So let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Getting started on the bottom border, there is gonna be a little detail just like how we had in the sleeve. So we're first gonna go in with a row of our secondary color. And then we're gonna go in with a row of single crochet with our base color and then another row of single crochet with our secondary color and then our actual cuff but we'll go ahead and do all of that together so once when we're here we're going to insert our hook into any one of these loops we're going to insert our secondary color and we're first going to go around with a row of single crochet simply putting one single crochet into every loop going all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to connect with a slip stitch and then chain up one and cut grab our base color do a row of this color single crocheted all the way around and then once we have those two colors done we will meet each other back so that we can do the actual bottom border together we've just made it all the way around with our first two rows of single crochet just switching out our colors and now we're going to go in with another row of single crochet with our secondary color and then also going to go into the base right after that we're not going to cut and tie once we make it all the way around so really quickly, I'm just going to speedy through this part because you guys already know we're going to insert our hook into any one of these loops. Pull through, chain up one to secure, and go all the way around with single crochet. Once we make it to the end, slip stitch it together and keep it there because we're going to go in with our bottom border right after that. We've now made it all the way around with our secondary color and now you guys are going to need to figure out and see how long you guys want your bottom border to be. Mine is going to be a total of 3 inches or about 8 centimeters. So once we get here, go ahead and make out a chain that comes out to the measurement that you guys want. Once we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is block off that last chain. We're going to do a chain up of 3. This counts as a double crochet. 
prepare for a double crochet and then we're going to insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the fourth loop from the hook with a double crochet and this is what we should have so far let's do this again together slowly this time we're going to prepare for a double crochet insert our hook into that next chain loop we're going to yarn over pull through you should have three loops on the loop from there we're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and that is our double crochet and we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we get to the base once we get down to the base we are going to connect to the base with a slip stitch but i'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there we just made it all the way down with our row of double crochet going all the way down our chain and we're just going to connect into the base and this is going to be exactly the same way that we did our sleeves minus the increase slash decreases because this is going to be blunt but once we get down here we're going to count out our next two available loops so here's one here's two we're going to insert our hook into that second loop with a slip stitch once we get here we're going to slip stitch up the next two loops that helps us work our way up to the next row flip our work and we're going to be going in with back loop double crochets so that we can get some ribbing so how we do that is prepare for a double crochet and then into this first available loop that we have we're going to insert our hook into that back loop only with a double crochet and that is basically it i'm sure you guys already know how to do this but go ahead and put one back loop double crochet into every loop that we have once we make it to the end chain up three do more back loop double crochets going towards the base when we get to the base we're going to count up two loops slip stitch into that second and then slip stitch up to the up the next two loops so that we can work our way up to the next row and then that is it go ahead and keep doing that all the way around once we made it all the way around we're going to connect the two ends that we have together with a row of single crochet but we will do that together once when we get there we made it all the way around with our bottom border and now we are going to connect the two pieces that we have and this is exactly the same so it's going to be a row of single crochet making sure that we go in through the front panel and in through the back panel so since our hook is still in through here we didn't cut and tie it we're just going to insert our hook into the back panel's first loop we're going to yarn over pull through and now that everything is connected we can insert our hook into the next available loop that we have in the front panel and then into the next available loop that we have in the back panel let's try that again there we go and single crochet and we're going to keep doing that all the way down until we can't do it anymore and then we're going to cut and tie we're now all finished up with our bottom border as you can see and now one of the last things that we have to do is actually just go in with a border and then also our turtleneck for the turtleneck portion and don't mind this i don't have my second sleeve done yet but i will get back to this and this will be done by the time I wear this at the end of the video but from here it's actually going to be the same way that we did the bottom border so I'm first going to go in with my secondary color just a single crochet row that goes all the way around connecting with a slip stitch and then I'm going to go in with a row of our base color one single crochet row all the way around and then I'm going to go in with a row of our secondary color on top of that so it's exactly like this but once we have our second secondary color row we're not going to cut and tie because we're going to go in with another one of these guys but just a little bit longer so that it can fold over where our neck is so once when we have our one two three rows of single crochet all done i'll meet you guys back so that we can talk about the measurements for the turtleneck we've now made our way all the way around with our rows of single crochets of our secondary our base and our secondary color and we didn't cut and tie because from here we're just going to go straight into doing our turtleneck and you guys are going to need to figure out how long you guys want your turtleneck to be if you want it to be a turtle turtleneck and go ahead and make it super long if you want it to be a mock neck make it a little bit shorter but i'm just going to start off by making a chain of about five inches or 13 centimeters once when we have our chain we are going to block off that last chain that we made we're going to chain up two this counts as a half double crochet we're going to prepare for a half double crochet and then insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the third loop from the hook with another half double crochet let's do the next one together even though i'm sure you guys already know how to do it we're going to prepare for a half double crochet insert our hook into the next available loop yarn over pull through we should have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over pull through all three and this is going to be exactly the same way that we did the bottoms so we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain that we have going back down our work we're going to count up two loops slip stitch into that second loop when we get to the base and then slip stitch up the next two loops to work our way up to the next row and then keep going back and forth 
with back loop half double crochets. I'll meet you guys back so that we can finish off into the base together just so there's a little refresher there. We've now done our half double crochets all the way down and we're just going to connect into the base the same way that we did the bottom border. So we're going to take a look at the next two available loops that we have in our base. We're going to count up one, count up two, insert your hook into that second loop with a slip stitch and that's how we connect this first row. And in order to start up our next row, we are going to slip stitch up one loop, slip stitch up two loops, flip our work, and then from here we're going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert our hook into that first back loop that we have, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And this is going to be exactly the same way that we did the bottom border but with half double crochets instead. And really quickly we're using half double crochets so that it can cinch in just a little bit where the neck is without compromising the neck hole. So we're going to keep doing this all the way around until we don't have any more base loops to go into and then we're going to connect it with a single crochet row and we'll meet each other back so that we can do that guy together. We have finished up going all the way around with our back loop half double crochets for the turtleneck and we are going to connect it and we're going to do it quickly because I know you guys already know how to do this because we've done this a million times already just for this piece alone but since we are already in this corner we're just going to insert our hook into this corner over here and then once we have that we're going to yarn over, pull through everything that's on the hook, if I can. And then once we have that, we're going to go in with a row of single crochet. So into this first available loop in the front panel, and then into this next available loop in the back panel, we're going to insert our hook in through both and single crochet. Let's do it one more time together. Into the next available loop that we have in the front panel, insert your hook. Into the next available loop that we have in the back panel, insert your hook yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we can't anymore. Go ahead and cut and tie. And now that we are all done with the neck portion, we are now about to work on the pockets. And as you guys can see, I already have one done. And right before we get started, you guys are going to need to figure out to see how wide and how tall you guys want your pockets to be. And mine is able to fit my cell phone. And just to let you guys know, I'm going to start off by making a chain that goes from one end to the next of five inches. But keep in mind, we will have a single crochet row on the edges, so that'll expand it just a little bit as well. So like I said, a row, a row, a chain of five inches or 13 centimeters. Once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain. We're going to do a chain up of one. And then we're going to insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook with a single crochet. Then once we have that, we're going to go into our chain, putting one single crochet into every loop. Then once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one and work our way back with single crochets. And we're going to keep doing this until we have just a little block of solid single crochets. And then I, not everyone, but I will be going in with another row of single crochet, my last row of single crochet with the different color that I have. And then once we have this done, I'll come back and tell you guys the length that I have. We're now all finished up with doing our little chunk of solid single crochet. And as you guys can see, the last single crochet row that I did was our base color. And the next thing that we're gonna do is go in with a row of double crochet. And then after that, a row of front post and back post double crochets, just to give us a little bit of ribbing along the top so that it can match the alpine stitch that we did and then we're just going to go in with some single crochet rows along the side so that it's easier for us to sew it in afterwards. So to go in for the next row we're going to insert our hook into this first loop that we have. Insert our hook, pull through and we're going to start off by chaining up three. This counts as a double crochet and then from here we're going to prepare for a double crochet. Insert our hook into that next loop with a double crochet and we're just going to go all the way down putting one double crochet into every loop. And then once we make our way to the end, we're going to chain up three and then go in with some front post and back post double crochets. Now that we've made it all the way to the end with our row of double crochets, what we're going to do is chain up three. This counts as a double crochet. We are going to flip our work and into this first double crochet post, not this guy at the end, but into this double crochet post, we're going to be going in with a front post double crochet. So that's the same as the alpine stitches that we've been doing. So really quickly, we're going to prepare for a double crochet. 
insert our hook behind this double crochet post. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull upwards, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first front post double crochet. And now we're going to do a back post double crochet. We haven't done this yet in this pattern, but it's basically the same thing. But instead of inserting it in the front, we're going to put our hook behind this next double crochet post that we have. So really quickly, we're going to prepare for a double crochet and then we're actually going to go behind our work and then we're going to make sure that our hook comes up next to this next double crochet post that we're going into. It's going to go over and then through that next loop. And from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through, yank up a little bit, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our back post double crochet. Let's do these two just one more time. The next is a front post double crochet. You guys already know this. We're going to prepare for a double crochet. Insert this behind our next double crochet post. Yarn over, pull through, yank up just a little bit. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then after that, we're gonna go in with a back post. So we're gonna prepare for a double crochet and we're going to slide our hook behind our work into this next gap that we have into the last front post double crochet that we did and this double crochet post that we're gonna work into. It's gonna go over that double crochet post and then through that next gap, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yank up just a little bit, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this is the ribbing look that we're gonna get for the top of the pocket. So go ahead and continue to do this pattern all the way down once we make it to the end. Don't cut and tie yet because we're gonna work our way down with a row of single crochets. We now have just finished up our row of front and back post double crochets and this is what it looks like. And we didn't cut and tie because we're about to go down the side with a row of single crochet. So let's do that together on this side. What we're gonna do is chain up one and then into these first two gaps that we have, they are side double crochets. So we're gonna be putting two single crochets into those. There's one, there's two, and then into the next one as well. There is one and there is two. And then from here, we're going to be working into a bunch of side single crochet rows. So we're just going to have to find a loop that works for us and then insert just one single crochet. So here's our first loop that I'm going to insert my work into. We're going to insert and then single crochet. And then we're just going to do this all the way until we get to the end, which is this bottom corner. And then we're going to cut and tie right here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to reattach our yarn into this corner, single crochet all the way down. When we get to this bottom corner, we're going to chain up one and cut, and then we'll be all ready to place this on our sweater, and then we can attach it. We are now all finished up with our pocket, and this is what it looks like. As you guys can see, this one is already connected. We're going to connect this together, but really quickly, just to let you guys know, the height of mine is about six inches or 16 centimeters, and then including our two single crochet rows on the side, I have a total length of five and a half inches or about 14 centimeters. And for this next part, I will be using my hook, but if you guys have a tapestry needle, you guys can use that as well. That actually might be a little bit easier, but if you guys don't have that, we will be doing a very secure way of attaching our pocket with our hook together. So let's get started. So we are now all ready to connect our pocket. The first thing we're gonna do is place our pocket down where we want it to stay on our sweater and this looks just about right for me so what we're going to do next is actually make a slip knot and then from here we're going to take our same hook we're going to slide that underneath our work and then we're first going to take a look at one of these loops that we have into the sweater that's next to this top corner that we have we're just going to insert our hook in through the sweater and then insert our hook in through this first loop that we have into this corner once we have that you're going to slide our slip knot onto our hook, pull through, and then we're going to pull this through all the way, including through the sweater. As you guys can see, our working yarn is going through the corner pocket or the corner loop that we have in our pocket, then also through the sweater. And what we're going to do now, you guys can see my hooks right here. <laughs> what we're going to do now is take a look at where the pocket is and kind of just eyeball the next area that our next available loop is and we're going to insert our hook in through there and then insert our hook in through that next loop once we get here we are going to do a yarn over 
and then we're going to pull all the way through, including through the sweater. And then this part's gonna be a little bit tricky. We're gonna make sure that it went through that loop that we just went in through as well. So it's kind of like you're slowing in by slowing. Wow, I said that earlier too. It's kind of like you are sewing in, but with slip stitches. So as you guys can see, there's only one loop on my hook and that is great. So let's do this again. And a really quick tip that I have for doing this so that you don't have to keep flipping it inside out to make sure that the hook to make sure that the yarn went over the hook is to keep this a little loose so that it's easier to slide it through and also twist the hook a little bit but i'll show you guys that in two seconds but this part i'm sure you guys already have down we're going to make sure that our pockets aligned because it is easy for it to twist but make sure that our pockets align the way that you want it to be sitting then we're going to insert our hook in through the sweater and then insert our hook in through the next available loop that we have in the pocket and then we're going to yarn over and this is the twisting that i'm talking about we're actually going to twist our hook away from us so that it can't well so that it's harder <laughs> for it to get caught on the yarn so we're going to do this and pull all the way through as you guys can see it's being pulled through the pocket and then there we do have this loop that's currently on the hook we're going to pull it through the sweater and then it should pull through that loop as well as you guys can see that's it we're going to flip this over just so you guys can make sure that there's only one strand of yarn on our hook so let's do this just a couple more times i know this can be just a little bit tricky but once you guys get the hang of it it's super easy and it's really fast so we're going to take a look at our work insert our hook into this next loop that we have in the sweater insert our hook into the next loop that we have in our pocket we're going to keep it loose, but we're going to yarn over, turn our hook just a little bit. We're going to pull through the pocket and also pull through the sweater. And then if you guys don't see that other strand of yarn that's on the hook already through the sweater, that's fine. If you guys need to go ahead and flip your work or flip it and <laughs> take a look at the inside of it. And then there are two of these strands on our hook. All we're going to do is just take that bottom strand and pull that over our hook if you guys need to use your hands let's do this one more time together we are going to insert our hook into the next available loop that we have in the sweater and then also into the next available loop that we have in the pocket we're going to yarn over twist our hook and very gently try to pull this all the way through and then if we did it correctly then we should only have one strand on our hook on the other side so if you guys have that down, go ahead and continue to do this all the way down. If not, then you guys can use a tapestry needle or if you guys don't have a tapestry needle, because quite frankly, that would be easier. But if you don't have a tapestry needle, you guys can use your fingers, a bobby pin, whatever you guys have. But I just like to do it this way because I feel like this is a little bit more secure as well. But either way, however you do this, we are going to go all the way down our side. Uh, attaching this to our sweater along the bottom and then all the way up the other side as well I'll meet you guys back once we have all of this done now that we have finished up putting in our pockets we have made sure that everything was nice and secure and the last thing that we have to do for this piece is weave in all of our ends this video was a long one but this is our piece once we've woven in all of our ends what can I say about this sweater? It is a turtleneck, it's cozy, and it has pockets. What else does a person need? This is perfect for the cold months, and I can't wait to see how you guys remake this and style this. And if you guys do, be sure to tag TCDDIY on Instagram so I can see what y'all did. And while you're at it, if you like this video or any other video on the channel, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It's right beneath the video. It lets YouTube and I know you're enjoying the video and it goes a long way to helping the channel grow and gain some traction. But if you didn't like it, be sure to give this video a thumbs down, but let me know why you didn't like it or if you have any questions, requests, or if you just want to say hi, I usually reply pretty quick. If you love it, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it's right beneath the video. It'll let you know when there's a new video uploaded to the channel, get you a bit more priority when it comes to requests, and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow so we can keep making all these great videos for you guys. And if you're already subscribed, huge thanks to you guys, but please hit that notification bell to know when there's a new upload for you guys right away. And please share with your friends. Every bit helps. 
Links to the yarn and the hooks will be in the description, and if you guys buy something using those links, that also goes towards helping out the channel. And lastly, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest links are down there too. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.